Okay, this is borderline real time. You can literally use this in a conversation. And remember, we're not testing the quality of the model, so the voice itself is gonna sound goofy. We're just testing how quickly it can convert my audio, if that makes sense. So as soon as people develop more current models with more current artists on DDSP SVC, we're looking at a future where people can sound like Drake, Kanye, or any other artist in real time. Hello world. In today's video, we'll be installing and testing out the real-time voice conversion function of the DDSP SVC, which is one of the newer competitors to the Sovitz SVC, the most common and famous current voice conversion model for AI vocals. The infamous Drake and Weekend AI song, as well as most of the AI vocals you're hearing nowadays, were made using Sovitz just because it's the most widely available and has the most available public models. If you're looking for more information on Sovitz or a tutorial on how to run it locally, I'll have that linked below because I've already made a few videos on that, as well as a video on how to train models yourself for Sovitz. The reason I'm making this tutorial on DDSP SVC is because it claims to offer the same exact quality of vocal conversion, but for a lot less hardware requirements and with the real-time function actually working unlike that of Sovitz. One of the main issues people are having with Sovitz was not having a powerful enough GPU or just hardware in general. That being said, even though DDSP claims to work on much lower hardware, we're still going to be aiming for NVIDIA GPUs and Intel CPUs, as well as the Windows operating system. Even if you have a very weak CPU and a very old NVIDIA GPU, this should still work perfectly. I know that pushed a lot of people out of the way, and this does claim to work with AMD, so I'm not saying don't follow this tutorial or give up. I'm just saying for troubleshooting purposes and to make things easier, anyone who doesn't have an Intel processor or a NVIDIA GPU, I won't be able to troubleshoot or help you guys. DDSP was built on top of the DIFF SVC program, which people were previously using before Sovitz. But the reason people moved away from Diff was the low quality audio output. And even though it was easier to run and you could have lower quality hardware, it wasn't worth it because of the lower quality audio. But now DDSP claims to fix that by using a shallow diffusion model to generate audio that is just as good or even better than Sovitz SVC. Just like Sovitz, this installation does require a little bit of coding and it isn't just a simple installable EXE. That being said, it should not be too difficult to follow. And if you have any experience with Python, then it should definitely be easy for you. And if you already followed the Sovitz tutorial and it worked, then this should definitely work for you as well. Just like the Sovitz tutorial, the first thing I'll be doing is installing Anaconda just so I can run it inside of my own environment. If you're not sure what an environment is, Basically, Anaconda allows you to run the Python script separately from the rest of the Python scripts on your PC inside of its own environment. So instead of installing Python and the requirements directly into my PC, they're installed into the environment instead. And that just allows them to run easier without interacting with other parts of my PC. If you wanna just run it in a command prompt, that's totally fine. And if you have other methods of running Python, then go ahead and do that. That being said, if you aren't following my Conda tutorial, just make sure you're running in Python 3.8. Otherwise you might run into some issues with the dependencies. Before we run Anaconda and create our Conda environment, we are going to head to the GitHub, which I have linked below and download the code. All you have to do is click code and then click download zip. Once you have the zip, you're going to want to export it somewhere on the root of your main hard drive. I know some people can just put it in documents and have it work great, but for me, for permission reasons, I always put it on the root and especially make sure it's on my main hard drive. I don't know why, but PyTorch and other machine learning systems often have issues if I don't run them off my root drive at the minimal. With that source folder downloaded and copy and pasted to your root drive, let's go ahead and open up Anaconda. To do so, just type in Anaconda PowerShell prompt. These parentheses with the name in the upper left corner will tell you what environment you're in, and by default, you're just in a base environment, and this will tell you the root of your directory. The first thing we're gonna do before we create an environment is move into the directory where the source code is located. To do so, just right click and click copy address, and then go back into the Anaconda prompt and type CD space paste. And by paste, I mean paste the location of the address you just copied. You'll know that it works when you actually see the name of the folder here for the drive. This next step's important. We're gonna create a fresh environment. And when we do, we have to make sure to set the environment to Python 3.8, or we might have some issues with installing the dependencies. I'll have all these prompts in the description, by the way, so you can follow along. I'll also make sure they appear on the screen. Create an environment. We're gonna type conda create dash dash name, and then the name of the environment. For me, I'm gonna name it DDSP dash SVC. When we create this environment, it's important to type Python equals 3.8 to make sure that the current version of Python in that environment will be 3.8. Make sure to press Y to proceed or it won't create the environment. Now, with the environment created, it is not necessarily going to activate it for you. As you can see, it still says base in the corner here. To activate the environment, type conda activate and then the name of the environment you just created. And you'll know it worked when the name in the parentheses changes to that environment. Now, before we get to actually installing it, 
we're going to need to download two different files and place them in the right location. These files are the pre-trained models, which will be linked at the GitHub below. You need the Hubert Soft encoder and the NSF vocoder. The link should take you directly there to download them. And once you do, you need to go to your main DDSP folder and then head to the pre-trained folder and make sure to put them in their respective spots. So for the NSF model, you wanna drop everything that was in the zip into that location, and then you wanna do the same thing for the Huber model. Once you have those files in the proper location, the next step is to make sure to install PyTorch into our environment from the official website. To install PyTorch, head to the official website to figure out which version you need. If you're using a NVIDIA GPU, it should be set up for you by default, and you can just copy and paste this installation command here to install PyTorch. This part of the tutorial may take quite a while. For me, it's going to take about eight or nine minutes, so I'm gonna turn my camera off and turn it right back on when it's done, but I'll be right back with you when the step is done installing. If PyTorch had trouble installing, then either you chose the wrong CUDA version for your NVIDIA GPU, or you weren't using a NVIDIA GPU, but assuming that went well, and we are mounted in the correct drive here, and we are in the correct environment in Anaconda, then we should be able to run this next command, pip install dash r requirements.txt, and it should install all the proper requirements for us. There may be a few path errors in yellow, but if they do not stop the installation, then more than likely they are not actually an issue. If it seems to be hung up or taking a long time to install, do not worry. Don't mash a bunch of buttons or click any keys because when it finally does go through, it'll usually actually type those commands in. So at most, scroll up and down with your mouse wheel just to make sure it's actually refreshing, but you should know by the blink that it's going. If you are running into errors at this point, however, you can always run those errors through ChatGPT. And one of the easiest ways to do it is to tell ChatGPT that it is somebody who specializes in fixing errors in Python code, and then tell it what the code you're working with is doing, and then present it with the error and 80% of the time, it will give you a reason why the error is happening and be able to fix it for you. And now that it's installed, we can launch the graphical interface with a simple command, python space gui.py. If this interface doesn't open for you, then there's more than likely an issue with the Python version you used and you did not properly set up the Anaconda environment. However, if you are at this step, then we can start trying out the real-time inferencing. As you can see, the model file is not actually available. However, there's a few different model files available for download attached to the GitHub, and I'll have those linked below. I'll be testing out two of the main models they have linked to the GitHub. In the future, I'll be releasing a tutorial on how to train your own models on DDSP SVC. And supposedly the training time is much quicker and much easier on your PC than it would be using Sovitz SVC. So a lot of people who are unable to train on Sovitz might be able to train and inference easier on DDSP SVC. And that's the whole point of making this video. Hopefully I'll have that training tutorial out within the next week and everybody can start making more models publicly available for DDSP the same way they have been with Sovitz. With the two models downloaded, I'm going to click select model file, head to exp, and then paste those two files where it's asking for the models. And then I'm gonna point it to the one called model best. By default, there will not be any model files here, but I'll have the best model files that I know are available linked below. And those are just the ones created by the creators of the project. There are no current models like there are for Sovitz of Drake, Lil Uzi Vert, or any other famous artist. So there's no way for us to really test the quality of the vocals. This will be more of a test to see how low we can get the real time effect and how low we can get the real time inferencing. Basically, if we can get it down to 30 or 50 milliseconds, that means we can use it in real time somewhere like Discord or even in FL Studio to make it sound like you're talking like Drake in real time instead of converting to Drake. And that's kind of the whole point of DDSP as well as future technologies like RVC, retrieval based voice conversion, which I will also be making tutorials on as well. Once you have the model chosen, you have to create a config file by clicking save config file and then reread it by clicking read config file. Whatever you have chosen as your settings will save whenever you click save. So it's important that you have them set correctly. If you don't hear any audio at first, then that more than likely means you chose an incorrect input or output. And it might take a few attempts to figure out what the correct actual outputs are. For me, it was Focusrite MME and the speaker was also Focusrite MME. As far as segmentation size, crossfade duration, historical blocks, and what FO version to use, we're gonna experiment with a few different ones. When I was just using Harvest just now, I was getting around 174 milliseconds. And remember, we're not testing the quality of the model, so the voice itself is gonna sound goofy. We're just testing how quickly it can convert my audio, if that makes sense. 
and we're aiming for 20 to 30 milliseconds. And if you can get under 20 milliseconds, you're looking at almost real time, which could easily be used in conversation. And once again, before you hit start conversion, make sure you save config file and read config file again. Okay, with these settings, we're looking at about 110 milliseconds, which isn't great, but isn't horrible. What happens when we turn down the segmentation size? Whenever I'm messing with the settings, I find it best to stop conversion, save the config files and read config files. And as you can see now, by changing the segmentation size and moving the historical block size, we're already down to 80 milliseconds. Okay, so now we're averaging around 70 milliseconds. So we're gonna go ahead and experiment with some other FO extractors. First, let's try DO and see if that lowers or raises the inference time. Okay, this is borderline real time. You can easily use this in a conversation. But the difference is, this model does not sound that good. Like it doesn't sound that quality. Let's start singing. Wow. The audio there was 30 milliseconds or less. And now we're talking about near real time. So by switching the FO extractor to DO and not even messing with the other settings, we're already looking at 30 milliseconds or less of inferencing time, which is extremely fast. And if we get some good models trained and implemented with this technology, then you can sound like Drake, Kanye, or whoever in real time instead of having to wait to inference your vocals. Now let's go ahead and try it with Creepe. So what are we working with here? That's still not bad. And I will say, that definitely sounds the cleanest on all of the models already, but it's still like 60 to 70 inference time. Which, to be honest, a lot of people could totally deal with. I could easily see people training this on somebody's voice and trying to mess with them in real time. So will DDSP be a replacement for Sovitz SVC? I'm still not sure, but I know for a fact now that the real-time inferencing abilities are extremely capable and extremely usable. And I have a feeling we can get near real-time inferencing even on weaker computers using better settings. So as soon as people develop more current models with more current artists on DDSP SVC, we're looking at a future where people can sound like Drake, Kanye, or any other artist in real time. And the future is only growing from here. I plan on doing a tutorial on how to train your own models using DDSP SVC, as well as exploring some of the other interfaces like the web UI and how to inference non real time in case you want to do some other things like that. And I also have some videos coming up on the RVC or retrieval based voice conversion, which is a whole nother way to generate AI vocals. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, all the links for everything will be in the description. I hope this was concise and helpful and it got the program running for you guys. I can't wait to see when some models are finally trained using DDSP SVC and the future of this technology is super excited. Thanks so much for watching. So much love and peace.